Hi, this is Mike from BlueRoadHome.com with the first in a series of tutorials on how to integrate uh, Machine 2 into Logic 10. Uh, that's the Machine 2 software into uh, Logic 10 so you can control everything from Logic 10. Uh, I am not a huge fan of using the Machine 2 software, the standalone version. I find it a little clunky and a little counterintuitive. There are many people that disagree with me on that, but this is just my workflow. I like working in Logic because I can control everything a lot better, and I just feel like I uh, everything makes more sense to me in Logic 10 because I usually work in that. So uh, Machine 2, uh, the software, integrates perfectly with Logic 10. Uh, so if you haven't upgraded, I would I'd recommend upgrading because there are differences in uh, how you do this um, with the older versions of the software. So let's just get started. Um, first step is we're going to create a software instrument. It does not have to be multi-timbral. Uh, just create a standard software instrument. It's fine. This is method one um, of how I like to work with machine the software in Logic. Uh, this is probably my go-to method that I use the most, but there are other uh, workflows, which I'll show you later. Uh, but for this one, um, all you have to do is go to your machine software, and we're gonna open machine two. Now, it doesn't really matter with this workflow if you uh, want to open a stereo or a multi-output. In my case, I'm gonna show you how you can route the individual sounds to different channels so that you can have better mixing control over everything. So for my case in this workflow, I am going to use multi-output, but if, if you don't want to separate all your channels into other tracks, you can just choose stereo because the method is the same. It's just, it'll be different uh, at the end of this video when we go to actually separate the sound. So I'm gonna choose multi-output. And machine's gonna come up. And again, this is my preferred workflow. Um, there's other methods of doing this, and we'll get into those in later videos. And this is a more in-depth video, so I'm gonna explain everything. I'll probably also come out with a video that's uh, a little less in-depth because maybe you don't need all the information. So first things first, um, let's go ahead and uh, for time's sake here, I'm just gonna open one of my, uh, one of my, factory user kits from one of these. So we'll open the Bloomer kit. It's kind of an interesting kit. Go ahead and play the audio here. As you can see, everything, the MIDI is already programmed. I didn't program this. Um, you would probably do that on your own. I'm just doing this for time's sake. So I'll play the pattern here. Okay, interesting. It's kind of an odd amount of bars for a pattern. Uh, it's five bars, but you know, whatever, that's just the patch. So that's gonna do for us. Now, what you may have tried in the past, and this is maybe why you're watching the video, is you can see this little icon here. This is the MIDI drag icon. Now, if I were to just simply drag this in with the current settings, which is the default, um, you will see what will happen here. So, machine is thinking um, and machine actually does a good job of separating all the MIDI files however logic has no idea what to do with them so um, I'm gonna change on machine here I'm gonna go to scene 2 so that we don't hear back the pattern from machine itself because you don't want to hear it twice um, and you'll see what I mean when we play this but check out what happens now machine again did a good job of of getting all separate, all the separate MIDI tracks out. But the problem is Logic doesn't know what to do, so here you go. And again, it doesn't sound anything like the pattern we just heard, so. Uh, and that's just because, again, Logic doesn't know it recognizes that uh, machine exported all these MIDI channels, but it doesn't know that you want to use the sounds in machines. So this is where we have to do our extra steps. So this is not really the preferred method. So I'll undo that. 
Now, the way to go about this um, to get everything on a single MIDI strip on a single MIDI channel, rather, so that you can um, you can work with the MIDI itself um, is to do this. Uh, you go up to in machine, you go up to your group kit here, which is what I loaded, and this is group A1. So what we do want to do is go to group MIDI batch setup. Now you'll notice the default is sounds to MIDI channels. So that's why when we pulled all those MIDI channels in, uh, that's why Logic got confused and basically played everything because uh, Machine did a good job of exporting all the sounds to MIDI channels. But again, we didn't tell Logic what we want to do. So what we need to do is go sounds to MIDI notes, not MIDI channels, MIDI notes. And that's going to put it all on one track. So now if we go back to our pattern, again, you don't have the... Uh, MIDI drag option when we're in a scene with no uh, with no pattern. So you got to go back to the scene where the actual pattern is. But now watch what happens. So I'm going to move this down a little bit just so you can see. I'm going to take the MIDI and I'm just going to drag it in to here. Okay, and then boom, um, we have our five bar. Uh, uh, we have our five bar notation here. And so you can check this out. I just opened up the piano roll editor and you can see these are all the MIDI notes that are in here. But each sound is its own MIDI note and can be completely controlled in Logic and not here. So we'll move this to scene two. Again, because we don't want to hear this playback while this is playing back because we only want Logic to play back. Um, and now we have complete control of what we can do, but you're going to notice one problem and this is the point where you may have gotten where you get a little confused and, and there's one other step we need to do. So I'm going to play this back and it doesn't sound right, does it? All you're hearing is just this one kick and it's making all the MIDI notes play that kick. Now let's watch what happens if I click this to snare, play it back. Now all the MIDI notes are playing the snare, okay. Um, now that obviously is not what we want at all. Um, and that's because there's one extra step that we've got to do. So up here, um, right above this little plug, you just want to go to this little knob, okay. And right now you'll see it's defaulting to sound. You have master, group, and sound. It's defaulting to sound. We need to go to group to do one setting change that's going to make Logic be like, oh, I see you want uh, you want each individual MIDI note um, to trigger a different sample. And that's essentially what we're doing. So we're going to go to group and you want to go to your input. Okay. And then all you have to do is just toggle this little MIDI active switch that makes all these different MIDI uh, patches or these sample patches, uh, work essentially so now watch what happens again we're in scene two so there's no pattern playing the only pattern playing is going to be coming from here but it's going to sound exactly what we want okay and it sounds the way the exact way we want it okay and you don't even need and i'll show you you don't even need this pattern anymore because now everything is in logic and um, you have all your control and logic, or you could start from scratch, just delete this, create your own, um, create your own stuff from the ground up using, uh, using just, you know, inputting the notes with the pencil or whatever, keyboard um, or the machine controller. And yes, with this workflow, you can use your keyboard and you can use your machine uh, external controller, your hardware uh, with the pads to actually enter the stuff in that I will show you in a second video uh, just because this one I just want to show you this workflow so at least you can get everything controlled in logic so here you go so now we have everything and you can go into your piano roll editor and you can you can alter the pattern you can do whatever your heart desires but you're able to use all the features of Logic's piano roll, so you can do all your own quantizing in here. 
stuff that I find a little limiting in the machine. Um, and again, some of you might disagree with that, but you know, you can change it up. Now, the last step here is remember how I set this up as a multi output. Um, if you want to do this step, you needed to have set it up as multi output. So what I like to do is um, when I do get the beats and everything and everything's working, I like to send out um, all of the actual samples to separate channels. So I like the kick on one channel, the snare on another, etc. Um, I'm sure you guys all know this kind of stuff. So the first thing we have to do is um, we'll go into our mixer here. And if you notice in our mixer, uh, we have a multi output instrument. So you see this little plus here. So you just hit the plus and then it's going to create 16 channels. Okay. Now you're going to, it says it, you may be confused by this too. Sometimes it's kind of the way logic works, but this is aux 15. You're like, well, it should be 16 channels, right? Well, no, because actually the, the instance, the first instance of your MIDI channel, um, instrument one is um, actually channel one in this case. So it goes one, two, three, and you get to 15, but this is actually 16 because instrument one is considered channel one. And then aux 15 is actually considered uh, channel 16. So just don't let that confuse you. Um, and again, we're gonna rename all these um, once we uh, you know, decide how we wanna route the kit. So, um, now, again, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and play. Now, you'll notice that it's only playing here. And that's because we got to do one last step in machine to route all these sounds out to their separate uh, channels. Now, again, you're going to go to this little knob up here, and you see we're on group. Now we want to go to sound. Okay, and then we're gonna, instead of being an input, we want to go to output. Okay, and then now it's very simple from here. A little, a little tedious. Um, you're going to say, uh, here's your kick, right? So you're going to put that on EXT1, okay? And then your snare is going to be on EXT2, and so on. Three, I'm just going to go down the row, because I have 16 um, samples here, so I'm just going to move down. And um, and you can um, you can route these, if you have more than one kick, you can route them to the same channel. You can route multiple kits to external one. I'm sorry, you can route multiple samples to external one. Like if you have like three kicks, you can route them all to external one if that's what you want to do. Okay, so I won't bore you with this. Um, I'm just going to pause the video and get these all lined up and then uh, I'll meet you back. Okay, so I just finished um, routing everything. So I see I'm on uh, sample 16 here, so that's going to external 16, which is actually um, aux 15. And as you can see, the numbers, they just keep going down. And you'll see kick boom is on external one, which is actually on instrument one. So just don't let that um, confuse you. And at this point, you would want to go in and rename all the channels. So you're going to say kick Oops, if I can write that correctly. You want to say kick. And I'll move this a little out of the way. And then aux uh, one is actually channel two here. Um, again, so that's the snare. So we will go in here and we'll label that snare. And, um, and closed hi-hat is three. So this will be the closed hi-hat. Okay, and so on. I'm not going to bore you guys with doing all these, but I would just go down the list and name them, okay? And uh, I can uh, close out of this right now. So I just want to show you. Um, again, I'm not going to bother renaming these, but um, now watch. When I play this, you can see the, the kick. I'm going to solo. There's the kick. There's the snare. There's the hi-hat. Okay, and it all works accordingly. And you'll notice that some of these aren't lighting up just because there's not a sample in this particular pattern on those. That's all. And then from there, you can uh, mix these however you want. 
So I hope this video was informative. If it was helpful to you, uh, please like it and please subscribe. And I will uh, be posting some more videos um, about machine and how to use it in logic because there's other methods. Um, but this is a great method, great workflow. Hope you enjoy it. Have fun making music and I will talk to you soon.